and he declared war on drugs. Now, this was even a bigger step. Now, not only are we going to say what you put in your body is illegal, make you a criminal, but now we're going to declare war on you folks for doing this. So again, the government needed a reason to show the public that this was absolutely necessary. And they did a survey and they discovered that 1.3% of the population was addicted to drugs. Can't have that, got to start a war. Well, folks, the war was probably a very poor policy choice because if you go back and you look at the statistics from that year, you will find that the likelihood of anybody dying as a result of the drug culture was less than the likelihood of them falling down the steps in their own house and killing themselves. It was less than the likelihood of them choking to death on their own food at dinner. But we started a war on drugs. So what I want to do is I want to just give you a little quick history lesson on the United States. What things were like in 1970, at the beginning of the war, and what they're like today. And I didn't come here to tell you how to run things in your country or make your laws. You're perfectly capable of that. I came here to ask, no, actually to beg you, please don't follow the United States down the road of prohibition because it's a road to despair a road to destruction, a road to disaster. One little drug problem we did have in 1970 was mostly soft drugs. Drugs like marijuana, hashish, psilocybin, some LSD, the mind-bending drugs. The hard drugs such as heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine were almost unheard of in, in the United States in 1970. This is not good. Thank you. <clears throat> Certainly unheard of compared to what they are today. And to show you how unheard of they were, this is a chart that I downloaded from DEA's own website. That's the, the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, the people that are going to save us all from, from drugs around the world. <clears throat> This is a very interesting chart. It talks about heroin price and purity. Running off to the left is the price that it would cost one heroin user to get high one time on average in each of those years from 1980 to 1999. Running off to the left is the purity level of that street drug that was being sold to that individual. Now, as I told you, I started in 1970, so I can back this up 10 years. When I started buying heroin on the streets, we bought what were called tray bags, because they cost three bucks a bag. And uh, you can see from these prices, EA has kindly adjusted their prices back each year, so they all are the equivalent of $1980, so that you can see what this is like without inflation getting in the way. Well, in 1970, a $3 bag of uh, heroin at 1980 prices was actually worth $6. So, it wasn't just that they, they bought uh, a $6 bag, the equivalent of, they had to buy two bags at the same time to get high once at the beginning of the war. Because there was so little hard drugs to go around, the street level heroin was coming in at 1.5 percent pure. It was called garbage drugs on the street. So you had to shoot two bags at the same time to get high ones. So that's twelve dollars to get high at the beginning of the war. But you can see, according to DEA, after ten years of our fighting this war, the purity level had more than doubled. The price had already dipped to three dollars and ninety cents. And after thirty years of our putting our heart and soul into this, the price had plummeted to an equivalent of 80 cents in 1980 dollars. And the reason it was so relatively cheap to get high by 1999 was the purity level of street drugs was coming in at 38% pure. That's a problem 25 times greater than it was at the beginning of the war. 
And today, DEA is telling us last year that their average seizure of street-level drugs was over 60% pure. Let's talk about how many people use drugs in my country. According to DEA, before we started the war on drugs, they estimated uh, uh, 4 million people above the age of 12 had used an illegal drug. That was 2% of that population. Today, they're telling us there's 112 million people above the age of 12 in my country that's used an illegal drug. Folks, that's 46% of that population. We went from 2% users to 46% users under a war on drugs. Something's wrong here. Let's talk about the money spent on the war on drugs. That first year, Mr. Nixon thought this was pretty important, and he put $100 million into it, or just on the federal level alone. That was a lot of money back then. But that, that cost has creeped up just a little over the years. If you include the federal, the state, and the local money that's involved in fighting the war on drugs every year, Today, it caps out at about $70 billion each year, just in the United States, our tax dollars. That's a lot of money, $70 billion a year. You'd think for that money, at the very least, we could reduce the supply of drugs coming into our country, wouldn't it? Not so. When I was a young Cop kicking in doors and seizing drugs with or without a warrant. A good seizure, what we call weight back then, might be 30 grams, or what we refer to as an ounce of cocaine, or seven grams of heroin. What do you see being seized today? Individual seizures by 2002 in the tons, 10 tons of heroin. 20 tons of cocaine. And folks, nothing changes on the streets except those drugs keep getting cheaper, more potent, and far easier for children to access. But when I say cheaper, I really mean cheaper. According to DEA, the wholesale price of cocaine has dropped 60% since the beginning of the war. The wholesale price for heroin is down 70% since the beginning of the war. Now, if the war were doing anything, those prices would be going up, right? Not down. Let's talk about heroin overdose deaths. Seems to me if there's any way you should be judging a policy for its efficacy, it's, whether it's good or not, is are we saving lives? Well, in 1979, and every year before that, we, we had a, about 28 overdose deaths per 100,000 heroin users. But by the year 2000, we were already up to 141 heroin deaths per 100,000 users. That's a five-fold increase. Something's wrong here. We're going the wrong way, folks. Let's talk about how many people get arrested out there. This is a chart just for non-violent drug offenses. Starts down here in the bottom on the left, 1970, and goes up to 2005. Nothing much has changed after that. But before 1970, you could count the number of arrests in the, my entire company, country for non-violent drug offenses in the tens of thousands. The high offenses were still the tens of thousands. But then, in 1970, when we started the war on drugs, thanks to Mr. Nixon, we increased the number of police doing that because he passed these federal bills that would give us all sorts of money to hire extra police. My organization, we increased our unit from seven men to 76 people. 